Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reason We Learn. I'm your host, Deb Philman. At The Reason We Learn, we aspire to be part of the solution. The purpose of this show is to take a good, honest, potentially painful look at the way kids are being educated. We know we can do better, and this is where we'll talk about how. Let's learn something. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reason We Learn. I'm your host, Deb Philman. If you are new to this channel, I hope you will consider subscribing to be notified when I make new content. Uh, if you are a returning subscriber, thank you. Please like and share this video so other people can benefit from what I'm about to say if they are so inclined, if they are interested in this question. The question that is the title of this video, Should My Child or I, it's two separate questions, but I'm combining them, them speak at the school board meeting came to me from a real parent. And I think I'm going to start making videos based on questions that have come to me from real parents because why not? Why not respond to as many parents as possible in one in one answer, right? Might save you some uh, some time and future DMing. So this was a parent of an eight-year-old who is concerned because the child is being bullied or I should say the child was told to be silent about bullying that the child brought to the attention of the school. I do believe the bullying was directed at someone else, but the child following directions given by the school about zero tolerance for bullying, et cetera, went and reported that threats were being made. Bullying was happening. The child was then directed to the school counselor. School counselor said, don't say anything to anybody. This is becoming a common refrain that a child bringing something to the attention of the administrators in charge, the ones who said, come to us, somebody's getting hurt, somebody doesn't feel included, somebody's being bullied, something bad is happening, see something, say something, come and tell us. The kids are doing it. They're following directions especially at eight, they don't, they haven't learned yet whether that's a good idea or a bad idea. So, you know, there they go and tell. And this isn't the first time I've heard that the response is to send the child to the counselor to ascertain whether that child can be treated for anything. Are you experiencing trauma? Are you upset about this? Are you very sad about it? Are you depressed about it? You know, they want anybody they can get their hooks into as having a problem. And in this child's case, that was not the case. Just, no, I'm just, you know, bringing you the information. And the child was told, don't say anything to anyone about it, your parents included. I've heard that multiple times before. Parents either will find out much later in the life cycle of the issue because these bullying issues don't just go away. Or the child comes home and says, mom, I went to the school and told them that just like they told me to. And then they told me I wasn't allowed to tell you. Why is that? That's how you tell the parents have been doing a good job. Don't let anyone tell you not to talk to me, right? That's what you should be telling your kids at the youngest age possible. And I'm sorry to say that you have to uh, shatter their innocence so early, but you do for their protection. So this child is no different. Mom, I went to the school and I told them this thing is happening and they told me I wasn't allowed to tell anybody. I just say silent. Don't tell other administrators. Don't tell mom and dad. Don't tell well, obviously the parent's very concerned. What do you mean you can't tell anybody? What, what's going on? Mother then comes to find out, didn't do anything about it. Didn't do anything. The bullying continued. What was threatened actually did happen. Uh, the child reported then, mom, this actually didn't do anything and it actually happened. And what's more, the person the child warned about was given an award. So everybody that was handing out the award knew that this child was a bully was, you know, they were warned that a certain thing was going to happen. It happened. It, there's, there's no question about it. Child was given an award for generosity. Do you think the child learned to be a better person because they were given an award for generosity? Praised? No. In fact, if you're sitting there thinking, I bet that kid was emboldened 
I bet that kid now thinks they're invulnerable. You'd be right. <laughs> the kid thought exactly that and made some new threats against adults even. So, you know, there's that as well. I'm talking now still about elementary school kids. So now the kid's pretty upset. They told me to say things. I did. They told me to be quiet. I told my mom. She told me that wasn't right. The person got bullied, kept getting bullied. Then they gave this kid an award. And, and I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. I should keep my mouth shut. I shouldn't say anything. You start to wonder if maybe they don't want the kids who report these things to say anything, either because they're choosing winners or loser and losers, and winners equal, you know, checks the right diversity, equity, and inclusion box, perhaps, or perhaps it's just, ick, problem we have to deal with. We don't want to deal with it. Thank you for telling us about the problem we're not going to want to deal with. So now we need to make sure that we cover up the problem so nobody knows that we don't have a perfectly bullying free school. This school is inclusive and wonderful and everyone feels like they belong or at least keeps their mouth shut when they don't feel that way. They know better than to say that the school isn't everything we say it is. They know better than to let anyone know publicly that we're not living up to our promises about belonging and inclusion and feeling safe and loved. Because of course, those are promises no one can keep. These are, after all, children. And they come from all over the place and they have to take everyone that walks through the door and they can't control for behavior problems and so on and so forth. So they're, they're dealing with everybody, but they're not actually dealing with it. They're just pulling them all into a building and then coming up with ways to keep quiet their inability to deal with it after making promises that the, the it isn't going to happen because all the loving SEL and DEI and mindset exercises and meditation and mindfulness, it's going to make it not happen, right? Yoga just makes all that go away, doesn't it? Doesn't it, right? All the aggression just melts away. Melt your anxiety into the floor. Take a deep breath through your nose. Let it out through your mouth and everything will be okay. Doesn't work. But we can't tell people that because then we won't keep getting the funding for all of the stuff that we say is going to magically make it go away. So instead, we take the dutiful, obedient kids whom we can identify easily because they're the ones who follow the instructions to come to us and tell us what's going on. Tell us if you see anything. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you for self-identifying as someone we need to keep silent. Now go sit down. And everybody else watching or hearing about it gets the message, well, I'm not going to tell anybody no, because then I'm on their radar. They're going to send me to the counselor. They're going to know that I have a problem with the problem that they're not dealing with. Eee! I'm just going to show. By the way, this is how every totalitarian regime that ever, ever was has dealt with things. Perhaps you've seen Schindler's List, where they let some of the prisoners actually assume leadership roles within the concentration camp, like the one woman who was you know, an architect and she's helping to build their barracks, their things that they're sleeping in. And she goes running up to Amonguth and she says, this, this foundation will never hold. It's going to collapse and people will die. And you know, she's complaining and complaining. Then he says, oh, thank you for bringing that to my attention. I'm an engineer and I know that. Mm, okay. She turns around to walk away and he shoots her. No more complaining about the substandard construction. Everybody else saw it. Everybody else learned their lesson. Keep your mouth shut. Don't assume because they put you in a position of leadership, please tell us if there are problems, lead our projects, that they actually want to hear from you. By the way, this is the same in the grown-up world of woke. If you work in a company that is led by people who have the same attitude, same thing's going to happen. No matter what's going on, if there's something that rises to the level of you need to bring it to HR, just go look for another job. My two cents, take it or leave it. But that's pretty much how things work these days. But for your kid in school, Doubly so. Come tell it. No, 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 no. So that brings me to the question. The question then was, well, they're not doing anything. And you know, my kid is, you know, on it now that they were, you know, she they know she told, and then but nothing was done, but the kid's still out for it. Should we go to the school board and say that they're not doing anything to fix the problem? 
And my response was no. And that might surprise you. You might be watching this thing, Dad, but I mean, why? Of course they should go to the school board. That's what the school board is for. To, you know, police the school and make them do things. No, it's not. Where'd you get that idea? Never was, by the way. The only thing there that are places if the superintendent, if you have evidence, like serious evidence, you've got lawyers involved, lawsuit level evidence and lawyers involved, that the superintendent has done something just so aberrant, you know, rape, <laughs> embezzlement, you know, like uh, threatening to burn the building down. I mean, something just horrible. You would want to bring that to them because they do have a say in hiring, finding the superintendent, provided it is something that unequivocally awful. Beyond that, they're not, they're not even a quasi-judicial branch of any part of the government. <laughs> the power they have is pretty much the power of the purse, and it's only to do as they're told. Like, in other words, the school district has a budget. And it's their job to spend the money on the things the school district asks for that are within that budget. And to the extent that there are competing priorities, they might need to have, you know, votes and stuff on like what comes first, second, third, or which company we're going to hire to do the thing for the budget. But they represent the district as if it's a corporation. They don't represent you. They don't work for you. You, you elect them, but you elect them like you might elect a board of directors of a company if you're a shareholder they don't really literally report to each individual shareholder. Ultimately, their fiduciary responsibility is to the corporation. They say we have a duty to our shareholders. Mm -hmm, sure, they do. But they can't really do that if they don't meet the responsibilities to the corporation. That's first. That comes before you. They're not going to just do what you want if it hurts the bottom line. So they don't work for you. First thing you need to know. Second thing you need to know, because of sunshine laws in every single one of our 50 states and territories, it's all going to be recorded with cameras and recording devices and put out there to the public, the general public, not just the school community, but like anybody, anywhere I can go watch school board meetings in states I don't live in. And that means you or your child, if you have your child speak, are going to be out there for all the world to see. And especially if it's your child, <laughs> that's going to be much more newsworthy. That's more the kind of thing that, you know, media and other ne'er-do-wells might want to pick up on, grab screenshots of, or little clips maybe out of context or you know, maybe to say that you put them up to it or you're using your child for political purposes or even if they're friends, you know, they, they agree with what you did. Look at this hero child. It doesn't matter. The likelihood of it going viral around the world in about 15 minutes is pretty high. Let's just say it's a possibility, depending on what the kid's going to say, what kind of accusations they're going to throw out there, et cetera. And so you better be ready for that level of publicity, not to mention the backlash that comes from it doxing, retribution in the classroom from peers and teachers and administrators against your child, not just you. Perhaps your boss will see it and not think too highly of it. Your friends, your neighbors, your relatives. So the question about should you go to the school board meeting with a pretty much any issue is do you want to be on television? Do you want your child to be on television talking about this issue? Your answer better be yes, because there's a better than average chance that will happen. More importantly than that, though, I think, is what do you hope to gain from it? So unless you are doing it for fame and exposure of your name, likely your address, your phone number, and every other thing that people can easily find out about you and your kid, including how old they are, where they go to school. I mean, you know, if you want that information out in the public... <laughs> Most people don't, but okay. But even beyond that, let's say you hadn't really thought of that, but what is your point? What do you hope to get out of it? And the answer I get back 99.9% .9 of the time is awareness. Are you under the impression people aren't aware at this point 
that school administrators, principals, vice principals, school counselors, et cetera, and others, people who would want to be aware, <laughs> aren't. They might not be aware it's happening in your individual school, but most people who would care one way or the other probably know. That kind of information travels through other channels. Their kids coming home and telling them. So don't operate in the assumption that nobody knows. I mean, it's awareness, like check first and check selectively amongst the people that you're pretty sure would want to know. Otherwise, what's the point of making people aware who either wouldn't care or would only care to help the administration cover it up? Other teachers, teachers' union reps, school board members who are politically aligned with all of the above. Do you really want to make them aware of your complaining and your child's complaining so they could target you as well and or come up with a reason to you know silence you or your child? And that silencing can take on a variety of forms. We're very concerned about uh, the way this might be impacting your child in terms of their anxiety levels. You know, we're working on we're working on the problem over here, but but you know, we want them to feel cared for and and included and belonging. So we're we're setting up a series of of uh, counseling meetings, and that's if you're lucky enough they tell you. Or your kid comes up and says, mom, they're sending me to the counselor to check on my anxiety. Your kid might not do that. Now, this is private and everything we say here is private. So you don't need to tell mom or dad, this is for you. We just want to make sure you're okay. Are you worried about things? So then if you find out about it or the kid comes home and says, well, so I met with the counselor again today. I'm sorry, what? And you go in guns blazing. Why are you meeting with my child behind my back? Well, we're worried about, uh, we're worried about her anxiety levels and, uh, you know, she had some concerns. So we're very concerned about her concerns. Now we say, don't do that again. Oh, parent, parent is neglectful. Parent, parent doesn't want to take care of anxiety issues. Mm, document. See how this goes? If you think I sound paranoid, I would ask you to do a little bit of digging, just, just a little tiny bit of digging into how this works and what their powers are in loco parentis and what they can do and have done to go so far as to involuntarily commit elementary school teachers away from their parents who complain too much for their safety. You understand. They expressed anxiety about my mom's upset and I'm upset and everybody's upset and people are yelling at home and oh, well. So do you really want to be on their radar? right? And then when you go on everyone's radar, they have further justification. Well, y'all saw it, right? You saw it. She brought her child to the school board meeting. She came to the school board meeting and was very upset and was, you know, speaking very forcefully into the microphone or even just raising all this awareness about these problems. She's very upset. So you all saw it, right? We're not wrong for bringing her child in for counseling. We're not wrong for suggesting they all need to sit down with the counselor as a family to make sure they're okay. We're just concerned about you. Guys, this is how totalitarian systems work, and this is one. You don't go to the totalitarian system that is turning a blind eye to bullying to ask for help with the bullying. They know what's going on. They're aware. And to the extent that other people who might need to know aren't aware, there are better ways to make them aware than by drawing attention to yourself or your child. So again, the answer is no. You do not go to the school board meeting. And your next question might be, well, then when, when should you go to a school board meeting and say something in public comment? It's actually very simple to know when. When there is an item on the agenda, and you can check the agenda, they have to make them public. When there is an item on the agenda that is up for a vote, and you have something to say about that agenda item that is of substance, you can step up and say, related to the agenda item for tonight about XYZ, I want to add this little bit of information, some statistics, some information about money, da, da, da. keep it as far away from you personally as you possibly can. 
offer up, you know, data, opinions, et cetera, and so forth, and then step back. That's it. I would just like to share some information about the effectiveness of these programs. Uh, this study says, but da 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 Fine, if you want to. But stick to the agenda items. Public comment is not there for you to just scream at the school board. They just don't have power to address your every concern. They're also not inclined to do so. Even that wonderful, nice person you elected or the five or six nice people you elected who said, oh, I'm going to get on there. We're going to change the textbooks. We're going to make sure none of these books are in the library, whatever. Okay, super. So they don't buy those books anymore and an NGO comes along and donates them. There's nothing the school board can do. Teacher buys them with their own money, puts them in school. Nothing you can do. They have absolutely no authority. They don't even have authority to physically walk inside the building unless they're invited and sign in, just like you. They have no police power in that school. They don't dictate what teachers can teach, what princ who principals can hire and who they have to fire, who they have to discipline. They don't do that. They do, can, they do uh, deal with safety policies. So that's why you might think, but in Loudoun County, bathroom policy, yes, they do deal with safety policies. But we're at a point now where a lot of these policies are getting handed down from the federal government with Title IX you know, strings to Title IX money. So by the time it gets to your local school board, they're like, our hands are tied. Uh, the, it's up to the governor and the state legislature to decide they don't want to take that money anymore. And then we won't have an obligation to spend it. And then we won't have an obligation to put in place a policy that adheres to the regulations that go with taking the money that we now are obligated to spend or we're going to be suspended and you guys won't have a, a school board at all to bring anything to. So that's why I always tell people, don't go to a school board meeting. Go to any kind of hearings or sessions in your state house where they're talking about education policy. Stick to money. Stick to money and how it's spent and how it's being used to put policies like this in school. Stick to violations of civil rights law, compelled speech issues, threats, violations of privacy, sex discrimination against girls in sport. Like stick to things we already have laws about. Stick to consent laws. When you want to talk about going behind the parents' back to see the counselor, they're violating my parental rights. Well, we don't have, yeah, it's in the constitution, like already it's implied. Remember those penumbras that the left was so fond of when they were talking about abortion? Well, in the penumbras, our children are ours. They don't belong to the state. There's really no precedent to say that because the state has some very narrow rights in loco parentis when the kids are in the school building, again, because the parents aren't physically there in the moment. And those rights are very narrow, like can't reach the mom, have to take the kid to the emergency room. We're going to go because we have an obligation to do that. That is not the same as we're going to force feed you all kinds of information that goes against, you know, your values, your beliefs. Uh, we're going to sexualize your kid. We're going to secretly change their gender. No, 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 no. And local parentis doesn't cover that. So demand that they enforce the rights that are not include, you know, covered in, in local print is really redefine that, narrow that down, but do it at the state level that has some teeth because they're supposed to protect your, your actual rights. You have a state constitution, you have a federal constitution, your school board, they can't do any of that. And if you're not prepared to go hire a lawyer and actually file a lawsuit then I don't even see what you hope to get out of going to a school board meeting and yelling into a microphone, much less having your child do it. And if your thought is, well, I want to teach them an important lesson about civics, what? That it doesn't work? That the adults are just figureheads? That it's all fake? That might be a little too much of an assault on their innocence just yet. You can still teach them about civics by going to the state house or writing letters to your congressman or representative or whomever. You can teach them a whole lot about rights by hiring a lawyer. If you genuinely feel like the rights are being violated, hire a flipping lawyer. And if you go, oh, it's too expensive, 
then maybe it doesn't rise to the level of you need to deal with it at all. And instead, I'm not saying suck it up. I'm saying figure out how to navigate around this issue and teach your child one very important lesson. It's called self-preservation. Go to school, get out of it what you need to get out of it, come home. Only talk to mom and dad or mom and, you know, whoever, whoever is the, the, whoever the adults are that you actually choose for your child to trust. Come home and talk to us. Any problem. There's a bully at school. You don't like the teacher. Somebody's pestering you. Something's happening. Come tell me. If it's something happening in the moment where there's violence, like you feel physically afraid for your safety, ask to go to the office and have me called immediately. And if the child has their own phone, simply say, it's an emergency. I need to call my mom. There's a family emergency. And then have them call and say, a kid just threatened me in the bathroom and you know said they're going to beat me up, et cetera, and so forth. In which case, what you should be doing is teaching your child to document everything. Yes, even an eight-year-old. Okay, I want you to write down every single thing that happened as the minute that you see it from now on. Or go excuse yourself and call me to do it. Or text me or do something to write down. So-and-so just said such and such at this and that time. I was standing here. I was standing there. If you can get it on video or, or camera, even better. And I know I'm saying things like use the cell phone to do all the stuff. But if we're talking about violence, you got to do what you got to do. Don't just go around looking for trouble. But if there is something, you got to document it. Then immediately, if there has been any kind of an assault, you go and file a police report before you tell the school. The school wasn't there to observe it. So they didn't see a fight. And it was having the bathroom, having in a corner, in a dark corner. It's going to be he said, she said situation. But something actually happened. Kid lay hands on, file a police report. If they won't take it, make note of that. Tried to file a police report at such such a date because so-and-so laid hands on my kid. They didn't do anything about it or so-and-so is cyberbullying my kid which by the way is not even a school matter, that is a police matter, document it as best you can. And only then would you, you know, if the, the next step is to the school and you say, my child needs to be moved, have something in mind you want to happen. I want my child moved to a different classroom away from this person because this person has threatened violence against my child. I have it documented and I filed a police report. That's already filed. It's already done. They're so afraid of the press and all that and there's oh, the police involved. They'll move the kid. Nine times out of 10, they'll just be like, fine, they'll move the kid. They're going to do anything about it. They're not going to discipline the kid who bullied your kid, but they might at least physically get your kid away from the other kid. This has to be triage. If you're not going to pull your child out of the school, if it doesn't rise to the level of rearranging your life to get your kid out of the school, you have to take other little methods to stop the bleeding and just get them through whatever years you have to get them through there, whatever days get them away from the bad kid, get them away from the teacher, get them away from whatever you're trying to get them away from. Do not go to the school board for help. They're not going to help you. I'm sure I'm going to push back. There'll be people coming into the comments. I'm on a school board and I would help and I would do that. What are you going to do? You don't have any police power over that school. And you personally as an individual can't do anything. You have to have some support from the rest of your board members. And even then, like I said, it has to do with either safety policy or money, and you have to be aligned with everybody else in the district to do it. You can't just like come up with a policy tailored to one person's kid or even an event that happened. It takes a lot more to de deal with it. So you have to accept that this is a totalitarian system and it operates the way they do. It circles the wagons. It demonizes the people who are looking for accountability and transparency. You will be the enemy, not the helper. They don't won't thank you. They aren't going to be grateful. They aren't going to try to help you. I don't care if your kid is the best student in the whole school, the sweetest, nicest, kindest, most generous little individual that everybody loves and cute as a button to boot. You or your child are the living, breathing reminder that they are not living up to the promises on their website that they and they don't want people to know about it because then they're worried about their jobs. It's a bureaucracy. They are concerned about covering their own butts first and foremost. So cover yours. 
and don't expose yourself through these meetings. Stick to agenda items, stick to money-related issues, and take the rest to your state house. That's my answer. If you have any other questions you'd like to ask me or you'd like to see in a video, please put them down below in the comments or uh, um, you know, send me an email. My email is listed in the about section and I'll see what I can do. But this one has come up plenty of times, most recently this week, and I finally said, all right, I'm just going to make a video and answer this question. You're not going to like the answer. I know you don't like the answer. There are probably plenty of you are going to argue with me, and that's fine. You don't have to agree with me. You do what you want. But that's my answer. That is my answer. I wouldn't do it. I as, as it is now, I don't go to school board meetings. I'm asked to go constantly. Will you come? Will you speak? Nope. I'm not going to do it. I don't do things that are a waste of my time, and nor should you. So that's all I have for you today. I thank you again for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.